We actually gain ground in Arizona, Colorado, Georgia, Michigan, Minnesota, New Hampshire, and Pennsylvania. An extraordinary achievement, right? Probably Virginia, by the way. I just didn't include it in that in that list. It, and um, and for how everyone thought this election was going to play out, that we gain ground as a community, as a family in these critical battleground states going to 2020, it's an extraordinary achievement and one that we all have to be unbelievably proud of, particularly given the downward pressure of the national narrative on all of our heads. And so in the in the places where we had, because of our new muscular grassroots, we had the biggest campaigns that we've ever had. Our candidates had more money than they ever have. And I think that's a permanent condition now mm -hmm. that we're raising, our candidates are raising two, three, four times, five times as much money as they did 10 or 12 years ago. What it meant in this election is it meant we could control the information environment. We could define uh, them as being too crazy and too extreme. But it also meant that at a grassroots level, because of all the volunteerism and the size of these campaigns, we were able to go on in GOTV and voter contact, we were able to start reaching voters that we just never had the capacity to reach before. And it's why I wrote a piece a year before the election that I felt it was not gonna be a close competitive election and not a wave, because I understood what was happening at the grassroots conceptually. Now I understand it much more viscerally than I did where I knew we were gonna be able to prevent what's called midterm drop off. But what it means for you as you go into this election and those of you who've been on the ground in recent elections, you know that because of this money now that our geo we can start going into reach voters that we never were able to reach before as Democrats. That matters for us because we have, there are more Democrats than Republicans, but we have more new and irregular voters. The ability for us to go deeper into GOTV targets is a transformative event for the Democratic Party. I don't think people really understand the significance of this for how we run our politics. There, we have a huge structural advantage on the ground, all of you and all of your compatriots, your fellow patriots all around the country who are building similar grassroots, bottom-up, to Tuckvillian kind of organizations that we're seeing all across the country is that this is a huge strategic advantage for us now as we head into 2024. And it's one of the things that I learned in my journey about how powerful this community has become, you know, groups like yours all around the country. It's a big advantage. Uh, but what happened outside the battleground is that we lost ground. And that has to be the admonition to us, right? We saw, a, we fell back in the four biggest states in the country, New York, California, Texas and Florida, because we didn't have these big muscular campaigns that were able to control the information environment and turn out our voters. And so the lesson is, Catherine, and you know what I'm about to say, is that at a national level, we need to get louder. We have to take, we have to take seriously every day now our role, not just as activists and people knocking on doors and writing postcards, but we also have to get involved, as you're doing in the Virginia legislature, it sounds like, to get loud every day, 24-7, 365, not just in campaigns. Their machinery that's pumping out, their propaganda operates all of the time. It took them a generation to build it. Yes. It, is, it is sophisticated, powerful, networked, amplified in every way, right? They don't have better ideas, but they're louder than we are at a national level. They can create things like fentanyl and Halloween candy, red wave, the fact that women don't care about having their reproductive rights taken away, right? All these ridiculous memes in this last election that dominated the discourse, we that is still the case. So part of what I'm doing now as an evangelist for this new politics that we're all feeling and that all of you are creating is we've got to take our job as information warriors very seriously. We have to become more networked and more amplified as what you're doing. We have to recognize that I helped build the war room 30 years ago in the Clinton campaign. The war room today isn't 20 sweaty kids with Red Bulls in a, in a headquarters somewhere pumping out video and talking points. It's now 4 million patriots getting up every day and being loud and spreading good messages about the Democratic Party and our good works through our networks. We have the ability to counter the right. I think the, the key is all of you. It's not just the organizations that I did an event this week with groups like Resolute Square and um, and um, and, D and David Rothkopf's Deep State Radio and Courier Newsroom, which is here in Virginia, um, and uh, and the you know the Midas Touch. 
We have right. these powerful new organizations that have grown up, that are doing their part in democracy and fighting and countering the right every day. But to me, I think where we're really going to make a lot of headway in the next two years is by having just the all of you take seriously every day this idea that you're in an information war and that the 20 people you reach through your emails or your posting or whatever it is, it all adds up right across the country to reaching millions and tens of millions of people. We aren't networked. We aren't amplified right uh, as a national party. That hasn't happened yet. It's something that is really critical that it does in the next two years in order to make sure that we both have these muscular campaigns that we have that can beat them in the battlegrounds. We know we can win in the battlegrounds, but we also need to control the national discourse as well. If we can do both of those things, we can really deeply wound MAGA and hopefully really start to loosen the grip of, MAGA's, uh, of MAGA on the National Republican Party, which has to be our goal. Right? Thank you.